Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Felix and this is Automation with iLogic. If you're new to the channel, I make iLogic videos and I also break down the API. I try to give you guys tips and tricks. So if you are interested, make sure to subscribe so you could keep up to date with my videos. So today's video lesson, I'm going to be going over the demonstration from the previous video and try to break down the component occurrence that I, I actually use component occurrence in just about 90% of the codes that I write. It's a very powerful tool and I should explain what component occurrence is. Each of these parts is considered a component occurrence inside this assembly. Okay, and if we right click all these um, options that we have, we can actually access this, access this through the API. We can turn it off and on, we can get the I properties, we can change the BOM structure and we can do uh, more stuff with it as well. If we look at the code of the from the previous demonstration, we can see that I use it quite a lot here. Actually, I don't use it quite a lot. I use it a couple times, um, but the only the only reason I was able to get this code to work was because of component occurrence. By the way, if you haven't seen the demonstration, make sure to watch it so you can get up to speed and so you can see how this code actually works. So when we take a look at the code, I first ask the user to select a part. Right there, I get the component occurrence. I get the name of it. And then I can also get the content center data from it, which was important so we can access the columns and the values of that content center. I use it down here once again in which I I don't ask the user to get I don't ask the user to select the component again. I actually read it by the name and I'm also able to get the file name of it. The reason I get the file name is so that when I replace all of them, I am able to see which ones were the same. Uh, all the parts that were the same to that part that I selected. I'm able to go through each occurrence down here. I'm able to go through each occurrence inside this assembly to see which ones were the same. And then I'm able to replace it down here. So that's how I, I use it. And now I'm going to go into how to get uh, started with component occurrence. I'm going to create a new rule. Let's call it rule one. <clears throat> the first step is to define the assembly document. OSM as assembly is equal to this application active document. I'm also going to define the uh, component definition of this assembly. These are also two lines of code that I highly recommend when using the API. <clears throat> now, I'm going to define the component occurrence as nothing right now. So I can get the, the component occurrence based off the name of here, up here. If I wanted to get the occurrence of the bearing, let's say, I will have to type OOCC is equal to OSM comp occurrences right here I'm able to access the occurrences I can I can add it as well I can add an occurrence this is different from the from the other way of adding components if we do it this way this is actually something different this is managed component occurrence which is going to give us an error we have a component occurrence not a managed component occurrence so we can't add it this way we would have to add it using the API which is add uh, up here. Uh, but since we already have this inside an assembly, we're going to search it by item by name. So let's call it left, uh, what's called left hand bearing. And then I can get the full document name if, if I wanted to. Um, actually, let me show you first what we can do with it. So when we, this, this is all the stuff that we can do starting off. We can change the BOM structure. We can see the constraints it has. We can uh, we can delete it if we wanted it uh, to be deleted. We can make it flexible. We can also get the name. We can get the, the path. We can replace it. Uh, we can suppress it as well. 
Actually, let me just show you one. So let's suppress. Let's suppress it. There you go. It got suppressed. All right. Let's unsuppress it. And then let's make it uh, visible. See what the pause. We're gonna unsuppress it, and then we're gonna turn it off. Sorry. So it's so it's not suppressed. So. As you can see, we can do quite a lot right off the bat with it. We can set the active level of detail and more stuff. If you wanted to see the, the full document name, I'm going to do a message box. OCCC name. <clears throat> we go to reference document descriptor. Here we can get the full document name, which is what I used in the content center code. And now we have the full document name without having to hard code anything into this. All right, what else can we do? We can also go in more in depth. Like if I wanted to turn off these features of this shell, uh, first I had to get rid of this, like so. And I should rename it. Uh, and I have to define a part compon component definition. And I'll set this equal to OOCC uh, document, no definition, whoops, definition. And then I'm able to access those features. Uh, and I'm going to search. There's a feature. There's a feature inside that shell called circles. I'm going to suppress those circles. So if I type circles, uh, suppress, or how do I do this? I forgot how I do it. Yep, suppressed. The true. I'm able to suppress those circles. All right. So that's the power of component occurrence. Um, you, you could do the same if you did a regular I logic. You could do this. It's basically on the back end. Uh, actually, let me just type this first. So this is XL312 XXX one. And, and the feature name is circles. Uh, features active, true. Let's get rid of that. Now I'm going to turn back to circles. On the back end of this line of code, what it's actually doing is running this API. But the way iLogic is structured is that it makes it more user friendly. Instead of having to write all of this stuff, you can actually. <laughs> You can actually just do this and turn off the circles, which makes less lines of code, right? Uh, but it also limits you on the stuff that you can actually do. Whoops. So it, sometimes you don't need to be so complex in the stuff you're writing. And sometimes, you know, the basic I logic is better than other times. If we wanted to get each occurrence of the, um, if we want to go through each occurrence of this assembly, this is how we'll do it. I use a for next uh, cycle. I think this is the best way. Uh, so if I do for, uh, let's define the occurrences. M O O C C S component occurrences. And that's equal to O S M comp O A S M comp occurrences. Basically, what this is doing is getting all those occurrences. It's like collecting in, in this like bucket. Let's call it. Now we're going to go through each occurrence in that bucket for, oh, whoops, for each OOCC in OOCC. We're, we're going through each of those occurrences inside that bucket. Whoops. We can find the name of those occurrences. If we go through each occurrence, we get the name of each one. Each of those uh, countersunk screws. And then we can also get the the full name of it. Whoops. Reference full. Now this is how I was able to see which one had the same file name. If they had the same file name, then I logically thought if they had the same file name, they must be the same part. So I'm only going to replace these with the new parts uh, regarding the last demonstration I gave. So you see, we're on to the uh, countersink holes, I mean screws. 
and we see that the, the file name is the same. That's how I'm able to see that those need to be replaced with the previous file name. All right, so I think that's enough for component occurrence. Hopefully this is useful. Let me, let me talk more about this one right here, about the logic. So in this logic, I first got the file name of um, the content center part right here. So I, I had the, the name of it. So I was able to find, I was able to locate the component occurrence just by the name, item by name. And once again, I did that up here where after I selected this bugging me content center part, after I picked the content center part, I got the name that I'm using it down here for the occurrence. So, and then I get the file name. Okay, I get the file name. Uh, I can skip this for now. And down here is where I get the new file name. So after I replaced that occurrence with the new one, the file name changed. It's a new file. So I had to get the new file name. This is a new file name. And I was able to get it once again using occurrences, item by name. I gave it the name. I uh, get the file, the new file name, and then I circle through each occurrence inside that bucket, inside this assembly bucket. If I see that this occurrence name is uh, is equal to the previous one, the previous one being before I replace it with content center, I I tell it, okay, now we have to replace these. Uh, we have to replace this occurrence with the new file name right here. And then I just say true so that it replaces all of them. And then I exit the four, the four next, uh, for each next loop. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. And if you have any questions, make sure to uh, leave a comment down below. I base my next, next videos on any questions that I see down in the comment section below. And if you want to keep up to date, make sure to subscribe. If you saw, if found this video helpful, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. All right, talk to you guys later.